Hello friends, welcome to Tech Physics. Today we will see the lecture on electrostatics 3. So here we are going to see principle of superposition of forces and its explanation. But before going to that, let's revise some important topics from last lecture. In last lecture we saw Coulomb's law. So the statement of Coulomb's law is the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges Q1 and Q2 is directly proportional to the product of magnitude of charge Q1 and Q2 and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. So here is our charge Q1 and here is our charge Q2 and R is distance between them. Then the force between these two charges will be directly proportional to the product of magnitude of charge Q1 and Q2 and inversely proportional to the square of distance this R between them. So square of distance R between them and also the force between them acts along the line joining them and the force between them will act along this line. The mathematical form of Coulomb's law can be written as 1 upon 4 pi epsilon into Q1 into Q2 upon R square or F is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. The first one is for unknown medium and the second one is for the air or free space. Here in the first case epsilon is permittivity of a medium and in second case epsilon naught is permittivity of a free space, air or vacuum. So this is mathematical form of Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law in vector form. As soon as we see vector form, we have to talk about the directions. Therefore, we look at the overhead bars everywhere. And here we are talking about the force on charge Q1. Force on charge Q1 due to charge Q2. And these two charges are unlike charges. Therefore, we can see the force of attraction between them. This F12 bar is in opposite direction to F21 bar. F12 bar means force on charge Q1 due to charge Q2 and we can always say that F12 will be equal to minus of F21 bar from Newton's third law also and we can see the directions also. And the last topic was limitations of Coulomb's law. So the first limitation is it is applicable to the charges which are at rest but not for moving charges. So it is only applicable for the rest charges and not for the moving charges. It works properly for point charges only but if you want to apply this for objects then distance between objects should be large as compared to the size of the objects. So if we are taking two objects then the distance between them should be larger than their size. And if you have missed the lecture of electrostatics 2 then you can go here and the link of video is also in description. So our first topic is principle of superposition of forces and statement is the principle of superposition states that the total force on a given charge is the vector sum of the individual forces exerted on a given charge by all the charges. So let's take some charges. So here is our charge Q1, here is our charge Q2, here is our charge Q3, here is our charge Q4, here is our charge Q5, here is our charge Q6, here is our charge Q7 and here is our last charge Q8. Then the total force on charge Q1 will be the vector sum of force on charge Q1 due to charge Q2 plus force on charge Q1 due to charge Q3 plus force on charge Q1 due to charge Q4 and so on up to the force on charge Q1 due to charge Q8. So now let us see the explanation of this. For explanation, let's consider four like point charges Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 as shown in the diagram. So here is our charge Q1, here is our charge Q2, here is our charge Q3 and here is our charge Q4. Let's go ahead. Let R12, R13 and R14 be the distance of charges Q2, Q3 and Q4 from Q1. So, this is our R12 that is distance of charge Q1 from Q2. This is our Q13 distance of charge Q1 from charge Q3. This is our R14 that is distance of charge Q1 from charge Q4. The force acting on charge Q1 due to charge Q2 is F12 bar. So, there will be some force on Q1 due to Q2. So that will be F12 and this is your F12. Why the direction of F12 is in this direction? Because Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 all are like point charges 
and therefore they will repel each other we know that the like charges always repel so therefore q2 will repel q1 and the direction of force will be in this direction so this is our f12 bar that is the force on charge q1 due to charge q2 the force acting on charge q1 due to charge q3 is f13 bar so this is our force f13 bar that is force on charge q1 due to charge q3 so this is the force on charge q1 due to charge q3 and the force acting on charge q1 due to charge q4 is f14 bar so this is f14 bar that is force on charge q1 due to charge q4 that is force on charge q1 due to charge q4 but what is total force on charge q1 yeah that is the question so let's go ahead and see that so the total force on net force on charge q1 will be here we are going to apply the principle of superposition of forces so total force on charge q1 will be the vector sum of force on charge q1 due to charge q2 plus force on charge q1 due to charge q3 plus force on charge q1 due to charge q4 and adding all these forces will give us total force on charge q1 so if there will be n number of charges then what so if there will be n number of charges then this equation will become f1 bar equals to f12 bar plus f13 bar plus f14 bar and so on up to f1n bar where f1n bar is the force on charge q1 due to qn charge that is nth charge if there will be nth charge somewhere then we will add from q1 to up to qn so that we get total force on charge q1 due to those n number of charges so this is our explanation of principle of superposition now let's revise whatever we have done principle of superposition of forces so we know that the total force on a given charge is a vector sum of the individual forces exerted on the given charge by all the charges that is if we have to check the total force on q1 then we have to add all the forces on charge q1 due to q2 q3 q4 q5 and up to q8 if there will be n then we will have to add them up to the qn and now for the case of three charges applying force on q1 we can write the total force on charge q1 as f12 bar f13 bar and f14 bar and if there will be n charges then we will add them up to the f1n that is force due to the nth charge on the charge q1 so this is an n and finally if you like this please like my video share my video and subscribe to my channel thank you